we have two rules sent up. One uh, requires a negative test result before coming to Kauai, which is pragmatic. Uh, and also the one that requires a 72 hour uh, quarantine followed by a post arrival test. Mm -hmm. So both I know, of them. I know you requested something like this, at least the three day post test um, back in September, right? And he rejected it back then. Uh, was there hope perhaps that this new proposal would have met some of the kind of, you know, changes yeah. that have happened? Yes, because I mean, we, we gave it a shot. It's been a month. We've had 12 cases where they took a test. Um, the test came back as a negative, uh, came to Kauai and then tested positive. We also had nine visitors take a test, not get their results back in time, board a plane and um, have those test results uh, arrive um, showing a positive. So, you know, in our opinion, these are concerns we had when we proposed it the first time, um, except now you're getting actual cases um, that realistically show uh, the, the gaps and the shortcomings of having one test 72 hours before getting on a plane. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be fair, he did say he, he's interested in working with you to come up with perhaps um, a better solution or maybe an, a modified version of what you're proposing. Uh, I guess, but I guess for me, what, what, what do you think is missing that, uh, you know, that you can't get to that second test? You know what I mean? Like, is it the resources? Is that con continue to be the issue? having the test kits and having the manpower and the money? I don't know, because the first time around, we made it clear that we had acquired our own test kits through, and we had uh, our own resources, and they kept on speaking about the lack of resources and tests. Um, so I'm not sure what it is, if it's just uh, that we're not seeing eye to eye, uh, Perhaps we have uh, different game plans moving forward. All I can tell you is that we're a very limited island when it comes to healthcare capacity. And so far, tell me where we've gone wrong. You tell me where we've gone wrong in our planning up into this point to keep the case numbers low. We've been very fast in making decisions. We've been very proactive. We've communicated clearly to our constituents. We've been able to keep our economy open earlier and longer without having to uh, go backwards. Um, and we wanna continue to really prioritize health and safety and move forward. We do wanna move forward. We're not saying we're gonna come to a standstill but we want to move with caution and avoid having to get into a situation to have to uh, move backwards into more restrictive tiers. Um, so. I mean, to your credit, uh, he did mention that you, your county has been the best in terms of combating and keeping the numbers low. Uh, but again, and perhaps that's part of the, the reason why more restrictions aren't as urgent perhaps, I mean, do you share that, I guess that that assessment of what's happening there, that, that it's not as bad as maybe some would think? Absolutely not. This virus, if you wait for people to get sick or if you wait for warning signs, it's already too late. Just the fact that how long the incubation period is, how many asymptomatic or, or individuals that have mild um, symptoms. We have a unique vantage point to be able to see what's happening across the continental United States before it makes its way across the Pacific Ocean and lands upon our shore. Why wouldn't we use that vantage point to be proactive? Because I can tell you 
that if you were to wait to see a large outbreak on Kauai with nine ICU beds, we could be in a very precarious situation very quickly. In fact, quicker than most of, than all the other counties based on our uh, inventory. And, um, and that is why we've always said that we have to be proactive. We have to be a very quick and bold in our decision-making. And if we do these things, we'll be able to keep our economy open and at least give businesses uh, another day to, to, to fight and stay alive um, and keep their businesses uh, going. Um, so, you know, uh, but look, we've always found ways uh, to move forward. Um, ah, I guess you caught me off guard because I didn't know we got a formal no as of yet. No, no, I don't want to say. Attorney. Yeah, I don't oh, want to no, say it's it formal. <laughs> no, it wasn't formal. I asked him during my interview, are you going to approve it? And then he said, likely not as it is. So um, that was the answer we're going to air tonight for the story. And that's why I wanted to get your feedback. Um, he said that he would continue to uh, work with you to, to address your concerns. So that's why I don't know if he's going to change his mind because this just happened maybe like an hour ago an hour and a half ago when i talked to him so um so again i mean between now and how much time does he have to give you an answer like a formal answer well he's you a know? governor he can take as much time as he wants he did assure us that you know he was going to turn around in 24 hours but the last time that a proposal it was uh 10 days so yeah I remember. You know, he can take as long as as you know the governor wants some um, I guess the, the gentleman agreement that we had between us was that it was gonna be a 24 hour turnaround, but I'm pretty sure something complex like this that has, you know, at least an economic impact on Kauai, which is what clearly I don't understand is that this only pertains to our island. You know, it, I have to, as mayor, make very difficult decisions in the best interest of what I think is best for our community. And at the end of the day, I'm willing to take 100% accountability. I'm not gonna duck, dodge, or hide uh, behind other decision makers. I'm gonna say, look, as mayor, I advocated for this. Um, if there's unintended consequences, I'm willing to be called to the carpet and have our constituents uh, judge me. Um, but uh, I do not want to jeopardize the, the health and safety when I can clearly see um, what looks like a, a big wave of um, positive cases happening across the continental United States as we speak. Uh, we're going to be having the holiday season up, uh, on us very quickly with Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. The health experts have said come fall and come winter, you're going to see uh, some of the biggest outbreaks that we've seen um, thus far. And it just seems to be a shame that we've come so close to a vaccine and to all these groundbreaking treatments um, to, to uh, potentially um, be uh, in a situation where we have um, a large number of, of cases, uh, as we've been seeing related to travel, um, when, we, when it seems as if we're so close to uh, turning the corner on this virus. So I guess the question for me is, if you had a chance to still kind of sway his opinion uh, as he's considering it, he did cite perhaps lack of resources. Again, the, the concern about tests. Could you make that case that yes, we do have enough tests to handle a post-arrival uh, three days after? Yes. And as far as lack of resources, I'm pretty sure the mainland is gonna be running into some supply chain disruptions because they are prioritizing tests and lab facilities for people that are actually sick. So even more so, getting a lab result turned around in time for people to get that result um, before they get on a plane and come to Kauai or Hawaii is even being challenged. So as far as resources, look, there's a lack of resources everywhere, but we have to do what's right. And what's right right now is to really start to take a look at more restrictive travel coming in. There's a time and a place for everything. And I know 
the visitor industry is going to take another hit. But right now, Koi has had the ability to keep our restaurants open, our bars open. Um, we, we have construction going on. Uh, for the most part, most of the businesses and industries are back up online and they've been operating for months without any disruptions. And that's what we're trying to do. Look, this virus requires us to make adjustments and to be flexible. And I got to tell you um, that the reason why we pushed back the reopening the first time and the other times is because we saw large outbreaks on the mainland and we're starting to see bigger outbreaks happening now. And there, you know, I would say that right now it's a time to be more restrictive with travel and not just, uh, not just go about a status quo. If it comes That's down, yeah, if it comes down to it, are you going to opt out of the state's tra pre travel testing program if this proposal doesn't get approved? Yeah, that's another option as well. That would be even more damaging. So I don't understand why a three day quarantine when we've done everything to lay out the best case scenario. We created resort bubbles so that guests would be able to stay on property and enjoy the property instead of quarantined uh, in a room but we hope to avoid a 14 day quarantine because right now the report we got back from Kauai Visitors Bureau is the average length of stay is about seven days. So you quarantine for three days on a nice resort property on Kauai and you have four days to go on your guided experiences and to explore the island. Look, it's not the ideal situation, but for a lot of these visitors, it's sure better than where they are coming from right now because a lot of these places um, have record number of COVID-19 uh, positive cases every single day. Yeah, and we did hear, of course, of the mask mandate. I wanted to get your reaction to that as well, the statewide. Uh, yeah, it's um, what we asked for is a uniform uh, guidance for masks. Uh, so he was able to do that. I'm happy with it. Uh, it should help to, I guess, avoid uh, some of the perceived confusion that was out there. Um, we were hoping that the legislature would consider going into special session um, to allow citations to be issued uh, rather than misdemeanors because it becomes uh, challenging for our court system and for law enforcement versus just treating it like a traffic infraction. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe not as um, strong as you would, would have liked to see it. No, but you know, anytime we can add uniformity and predictability, um, it's always good, especially when it comes to masks. I know uh, a huge component was um, being able to issue citations, but as the governor has said, there are certain things that he's allowed to do, certain things that he's not allowed to do. Uh, if we were to change the penalties, it would require the legislature to deem this as a high, high level priority or high enough to at least uh, call their members back into a special session before January. Mm -hmm. And then another topic that we talked about was the um, CARES Act funding. I know of all the counties, you seem to be the one who's been doing the best in terms of getting your spending out by the end of the year, almost half, I guess, according to some reports. Uh, on your end, are you seeing that you'll be able to spend all of your money by the end of the year? Yes, um, we were able to, well, we just followed Congress's, um, you know, their direction. They, the intent of the CARES Act money was to get it out as quickly as possible into the economy. Um, and so we did just that. Come Friday, uh, we're calling in some of the nonprofit organizations that were recipients to get a report back as to um, how much more funds they have. Um, and then really uh, start pressing forward to make sure that all of that is spent. But we are anticipating uh, and expected to spend all of it by the okay. deadline. Do you have a plan B? So you don't think that uh, you'll have some leftover that you'd have to give back at this point? That's what we're aiming not to do. I mean, it's very hard to give back money when we have so many unmet needs. And so that's why we took a full court press approach to getting that money out as quickly as possible.